Hi students, in this session we will discuss about IMDD systems. That is, IMDD means Intensity Modulation with Direct de Detection. That is IMDD. IMDD system is widely used in the optical communications. That is, Intensity Modulation with Direct Detection system is used widely in the optical communication systems. In this case, the information is carried only by the intensity and not the frequency or phase. That means the information is carried only by the intensity in the case of intensity modulation direct detection technique. And here the transmitted signal through the optical link is applied directly to the photo detector in the receiver and which converts the collected optical field into the current or voltage. See this is the basic block diagram. In this case the transmitted signal through the optical, optical link is applied directly to the photo detector in the receiver side and which converts the collected optical field into the current or voltage. See this, this is the basic block diagram. So you can see that there is an analog input signal and which is given to the transmitter side and the transmission medium is optical fiber and this is the receiver side. In the transmitter side there is a drive circuit and an optical source and in the transmitter side modulation process takes place and this optical source is source modulates the carrier signal and it, it uh, the modulator signal will be transmitted through the optical fiber and at the, the receiver side the detector will detect and then the detector signal will be amplified and it will be given as a analog output. So this is the basic block diagram of intensity modulation. And here you can see a diagram of intensity modulation. Here the carrier signal frequency is given, and this is the baseband. This is the overlap. This overlap represents the baseband signal, and this is the modulated signal itself. Based on the intensity of the modulating signal, the carrier signal is modulated. So here the information carrying part is the intensity, not the phase or frequency. So you can see that the carrier amplitude will be high at the highest intensity of the modulated signal and the carrier amplitude will be lesser at the lowest intensity of the modulated signal. And you can see that the modulation index is equal to P max minus P i divided by P i where P i is the unmodulated, unmodulated carrier power. P max is the maximum power of the carrier. And here let us go to different, let us go to the different sections such as drive circuit, optical source, detector, amplifier etc. First of all, we will discuss about the light source and here the light sources used are lasers, injection laser diodes, ILDs and LEDs. Usually LEDs are most commonly used because it has very good features comparing to the other types of lasers and other types of LEDs. And the basic points to be considered for a light source used for a modulation are first one is the emission wavelength of this optical source with the low spectrum of glass fibers is 820 nanometer, 1300 nanometer and 1550 nanometer. That means these are the three optical windows of operations. So the em emitter light should be maybe in this wavelength range. And also the sources should be capable of modulating at the rates and which is greater than that of 1 gigahertz that is for high data transmission. And the spectral width of the source should be narrow and which uh, which in turn minimize the bandwidth limiting pulse dispersion in the fiber bandwidth limiting pulse width dispersion in the fibers so that uh, the spectral width of the source should be narrow so um, so uh, we are preferring lasers as sources instead of leds or ilds also the average emitted power of the source uh, that is needed is uh, few milliwatts uh, and the radiance of the source should be high as possible. Also the sources must have long lifetime and the sources should be highly reliable and sources should be reasonably low cost. These are the features that is needed for a optical source which is used in the communication purpose. And uh, next we will go to the basic uh, transmitter structure and actually the transmitter is the main part of the optical communication system. And in the transmitter, the electrical signal is converted into the optical signals. 
by the modulation by the modulation of the optical source so you can see that the transmitter contains the drive circuit and optical source and here the electric optical signal is converted into electrical uh, signals sorry electrical signal is converted into sorry electrical analog electrical signal is converted into the optical signals in the case of transmitter there is an optical source here and by the modulation uh, you will get um, a good quality light output at the um, uh, at the transmitter and the conversion of the electrical signal see the conversion of the electrical signal into the optical signal uh, is obtained by the modulating the optical source and uh, it is with the help of an electronic circuit and uh, different uh, configurations are used to convert the message electrical signals at the transmitter into the modulation uh, voltage or current and which is um, which is based on the su su suitability um, of usage and the circuit which is used to convert this electrical signal into optical um, signal is called um, the driving circuit for the digital and analog transmission different driving circuits are used um, and so the, we can say that the ma major components um, of the transmitter are light source and the driving circuit and also there will be some protection and voltage supply which is not shown in the block diagram and these are the major components of the transmitter structure and uh, there is an uh, there is a driver circuit and usually the driver um, uh, circuit is used to convert the message electrical signals at the transmitter transmitter into the modulation current or voltage suitable for the optical source and next we will go to the led driver circuit there are led driver circuits used uh, or um, laser di driver circuit used so we will first go to the led driver circuit and this is a base, uh, this is a circuit diagram for the led driver circuit you can see that there is a transistor q1 and there is a, an led and from which the light is coming out and uh, there is a op op amp that is operational amplifier which is used as a feedback element and there are different resistors r1 and r2 and here you can see that the transistor uh, q1 and uh, the limited number of resistors are used in the circuit diagram and here the uh, resistors are used to limit the current flowing through the um, uh, through the led uh, d1 resistors are used to limit the current flowing through the, uh, the led d1 also um, the transistor um, is uh, called the uh, see transistor you can see that there is a transistor q1 and it works as the transconductance amplifier and uh, this configuration converts the voltage into the current uh, here we will give the in analog input voltage as v in and it will be converted into the current c the light output uh, obtained from this uh, laser diode or led c uh, here led circuit is used so um, the light output coming from this led is proportional to the current flowing through it current flowing through that led uh, see LED exhibits a peak drive current uh, in, in, in this case the LED exhibits a peak driving current at 100 milliampere and here the voltage drop is typically 1.5 volt and here this uh, op amp that is U1 is used and which forms the feedback loop and that op amp drives the base of the Q1 this is the op amp and the, this drives the base of the Q1 uh, such that it assures that uh, the VR2 should be equal to v in that is the main design constraint vr2 should be equal to v in that is v in is here vr2 should be equal to v in in this case and it is assured by the use of this operational amplifier it provides a feedback path and even though this circuit is using there is some form of nonlinearities associated with q1 and this will this circuit will achieve a bandwidth of 10 to 100 megahertz and there is uh, this is analog led driver circuit and this is the digital led driving circuit and uh, the only difference is uh, that instead of analog signals used here uh, the signals used is digital signals uh, and uh, uh, this the circuit should be designed in such a way that it should uh, support uh, the maximum speed next is the laser diode driver circuit and the laser diode driver circuit should make the laser 
uh, operate in the linear region uh, where the output power will be linear to the input current uh, and analog signals um, path in, in this case uh, there are you can see that there is an uh, analog input is given here uh, there is an RF amplifier which is used to amplify the analog input signal uh, and in between the Q1 and um, uh, this amp analog input signal there is an impedance um, matching um, circuit um, and also there is an operational amplifier um, seen here and this um, provides input to this pin diode and also it forms a loop in this in, a, in this manner and this is a light emitting diode um, and based on the analog input um, there will be light will be emitted from this diode and there will be a current Based, uh, and there will be a current flowing through this T1 and uh, the light output produced will be proportional to this current and you can see that uh, and here the analog signal path involves uh, only the C1 you can see that C1 is here uh, C1, R1, R2 and uh, Q1 also there is a diode D1 this is the analog uh, circuit involves analog path involves and the um, Q1 act as a transconductance stage uh, and uh, which in which the voltage flows uh, in and current flows out and C1 passes only the AC portion of the analog input signal here is a C1 um, which passes the AC portion of the analog input signal and R1 is only a few tens of ohms when we are designing R1 and we will take the um, R1 values very um, small um, and the AC portion of the analog input voltage V in appears at the base of the Q1 so and also um, the AC portion will um, appears at the emitter of the Q1 also and uh, and v, v in is the AC voltage uh, at the emitter of the Q1 and uh, this um, imposes across the R2 uh, and this produces a modulation current V in by R2 and U1 supplies see here there is a U1 U1 supplies the current to the laser uh, current to the laser through R3 see Mm, there is a laser diode uh, and this U1 mm, uh, provides current uh, to this laser uh, diode through R3 mm, and R1 and U1 creates a loop that maintains a constant photodiode current through the pin diode see this is the operational amplifier U1 and it will uh, drive the circuits uh, laser, di uh, laser diode uh, through R1 and R3 so this forms a loop this path forms a loop next is the uh, modulation um, part at the transmitter side there will be um, modulation uh, different modulation schemes is used, uh, using and modulation format used are amplitude shift keying that is ASK frequency shift keying FSK phase shift keying PSK uh, and ASK means um, on off uh, we can say say ASK as on off switch and here the modulated signal modulates high frequency carrier and here the intensity of the modulated signal is used to modulate the carrier signal and in this case the noise is very high and when we are modulating the on state in the on state binary 1 is transmitted and for the off state binary 0 is transmitted you can see a baseband signal here see the baseband signal and there is a carrier signal and ASK modulus signal is for the binary signal 1 the carrier wave is transmitted and for 0 you know carrier wave is transmitted and again for 1 my carrier wave is transmitted this is the basic ASK method and next is the frequency shift key in this case the frequency of the laser light is switched between two frequencies known as a frequency shift key and this is the baseband signal you can see that for the 1 a higher frequency is transmitted and for 0 a lower frequency is transmitted so the wave expands and for again one um, uh, uh, another higher frequency is transmitted the, uh, therefore two different frequencies are used here for transmission so we can say, uh, say that f0 is equal to here f0 represents the frequencies corresponding to the um, baseband signal 0 and f1 is the frequency corresponding to the baseband signal 1 so f0 equal to a into cos omega c minus delta omega into t and f1 equal to a into cos omega c plus delta um, f delta uh, delta omega into t these are the two um, frequencies corresponding to fsk next one is phase shift key in the case of phase shift key uh, phase of the baseband signal is used to modulate the carrier signal in the phase shift key and here the baseband signal is shown here 
and the uh, modulated signal is shown here you can see actually it is not clear here uh, but uh, the, you can see at one there is a phase change at the interface of 1 to 0 there, when there is a transmission from 1 to 0 takes place there is a phase change you can see here that there is a phase change occurring here similarly uh, from 0 to 1 you can see here that a phase change of 180 degree occurs here next one is the coherent detection and you know that detection means to extract the symbols from the waveform and in coherent detection the optical signal is combined with a continuous wave optical field before it falls to the detector and you can see the see also the continuous wave signal is generated at the receiver using the laser as local oscillator this is the schematic diagram of the coherent detection scheme and there is an optical signal input here and the local oscill optical oscillator will be there it produces a higher frequency signal and these two signals will be mixed and then it will be given to the photo detector and then um, there will be various electronic circuits for processing so in coherent detection before the detector circuit the optical signal is combined with the continuous wave optical field and this is a basic block diagram of the coherent light wave systems we have uh, gone through the imdd um, structure and that contains a transmitter um, optical fiber and a receiver and here uh, in the case of coherent light wave systems the um, basic components used are um, there will be a modulator at the transmitter side and there is a signal laser and which is used to uh, give signals uh, to this transmitter uh, structure uh, or optical th this will give the um, original input signals or light signals and and these signals will be after modulation uh, ASK or F PSK or FSK modulation may be used and the signals will be transmitted through the optical fiber and when it is uh, reaching at the coherent receiver coherent receiver um, means that in such in, in coherent receiver uh, there will be an external local oscillator frequency and this signal will be mixed with this local oscillator frequency uh, and uh, then it is detected at the photodiode you can see that there is a coupler in order to couple the optical fiber with the external coherent receiver circuitry and the, the photodiode is used to detect the um, original message signals and the original detector signal will be amplified and the noise will be filtered um, and data will be taken outside this is the coherent light wave system and the basic equations concerning this optical detection is that the modulated signal is given by ESC see, see here there is a modulating section shown here and in the uh, this is uh, this is the point where this part occur see this is the receiver side and this is the detailed block this is the detailed section of this receiver side okay and the in the case of optical detection the modulated signal es is equal to as into e raised to minus j into omega ct plus phi s where as is the amplitude and the omega c is the carrier frequency phi s is the phase and the, you know that there is a local oscillator in order to provide the um, higher frequency uh, for modulation uh, and so ELO that means local oscillator signal amplitude will be equal to ALO into E raised to minus J omega LO plus phi LO where LO is the local oscillator and omega is the frequency omega LO is the um, frequency for, of the local oscillator ALO is the amplitude of the local oscillator phi LO is the phase of the local oscillator and the output power of the photo detector we can write it as P of T is equal to PS plus PLO plus 2 into square root PS into PLO into cos omega IFT plus 5 where PS is equal to AS square divided by 2 where this is a signal power and PLO is a, this is original input signal power PLO is a local oscillator frequency power that is equal to ALO square divided by 2 WIFP is intermediate frequency which is the difference between omega C and omega L and that will be equal to phi s minus phi l so that's all about this coherent um, detection and uh, next we will um, go to the uh, next we will go to the um, different detection schemes used in the next video thank you